Never forget this about how much God actually loves you. He cares about you. Like I covered in the very first video. If you haven't watched that, click it down below because it truly is going to bless your heart. So you don't need to live life wondering, oh, God must be mad at me because of the things I did or God hates me because I'm friends with this or I did this. Who cares about your past? The moment you decide to say, I do to God, the Bible says that he no longer remembers your sins. It's as far as, as the east is from the west. So those two things will never, ever meet. And God loves you. He loves you. He created you with a plan and a purpose and a bright future, as I discuss in Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Before you were fully formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I had set you apart and I appointed you to be a prophet amongst the nations. So before you were even fully born, he had a plan and a purpose for your life. And I'm telling you that you're going to accomplish that plan and purpose before he comes. You're going to walk in to your God-given identity. You're going to walk in to your inheritance. You're going to walk in to what he has specifically created for you to do. So let's get into this. Start tonight that say I live in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm not going to do what they tell me to do. I'm going to do what you've told me to do. I'm going to be holy and live for you. Brother, when you do that, God will bless you. He'll break every yoke. He'll break every sin. And you're going to make it in Jesus' name. I see the power of God hidden in the high schools, in the primary schools, on the university campuses, in the places of business, in the places of government. We've seen the whole region shaken. Your value doesn't come from people. That's the first thing you need to understand. Your value does not come from people. Your value doesn't come from the things that your parents say to you, that your friends say to you. That you hear from your teachers, your aunties and uncles, your value comes from God. So, and so this is why you need to put your trust and your faith with him. This is what the Bible says in the Psalms in the, uh, 146 verses 3 to 8. It says, do not put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last breath, they return to the earth and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have their trust in the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to those. Uh, he gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. And the Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. And the Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. So have an expectation. That God's going to lift you up. That God is going to take you from where you are and set your feet up on high. The Bible says that he takes the beggar from the dung hill. You know what a dung hill is? Literally, exactly what it sounds like. He takes the beggar from the dung hill and sets him high above with prince and princes. So God will take you from where you're at. doesn't matter how low you think you are. doesn't matter your economical background, your sociological background, if that's even a word. does not matter where you are. The moment you put your faith, your trust, your hope, your confidence in the Lord, He's going to take you higher and higher. The Bible says, says, from glory to glory, victory to victory, and strength to strength. One of your covenant promises in Deuteronomy 28 says, I will make you high above the nations of the earth. And in verse twelve, of Det uh, sorry, verse ten, of Deuteronomy twenty-eight, one of my favorite verses it says that nations will recognize you are a people claimed by God, and they will stand in awe of you. You know, you're supposed to be envied by the world. That's how God has His hand over His people. That's what He desires for the the world to know that He is the true and living God. And the moment you put your faith, your trust, your hope into Him, He's going to exalt you higher than anybody else. And we can see this through the life of every single person you read through Scriptures. You got to understand that there was nobody special. The Bible says, Hebrews 13, 8, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means what he's done for one, he will do for all. He has no favorites. The only thing that sets, that, that sets people apart is faith in his word. And faith is always accompanied by action. Faith without action is just hope. Oh, yeah, I wish things were going to get better. And this is where a lot of people are. They're just stuck in this place of hope. Oh, I hope things are going to get better or even better. Oh, I know things are going to get better. Uh, but they don't do anything. 
They just sit there and hoping and hoping and hoping and hoping it's going to magically work itself out or it's going to manifest into the reality. That's not a thing. You can grab all the crystals you want, <laughs> and rub it on your forehead, smell it, spray whatever you need to spray for chakras, and you're going to find out that that, ha- is, that that amounts to nothing. Nothing. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So you need to apply your faith to what God says. And that's what's going to bring change in your life. Know who you are. Know your identity in Him. He's created you with a plan and a purpose, like I just read in, in Jeremiah chapter 1. His plans for you are not for destructions, Jeremiah 29 11. And understand this. Let's go to uh, James chapter 1, verses 17. And it says, Whatever is good and perfect comes down from the Father of lights, who created all things in the heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. You can understand that every good and perfect gift comes from Him. Destruct. So that means, you know what good and perfect is? Cancer is not good and perfect. Anxiety is not good and perfect. Sickness is not good and perfect. Depression is not good and perfect. Every good and perfect thing comes from the Father of Life, a Father of Light, in whom there is no variance. And He doesn't change as if a shifting shadow. You know what that means? You know when you have an object in the mirror and then you have the, the sun or a light shining on this? So wherever the, the light goes, it means the 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 shadow that it casts is going to either get longer or get shorter or move direction dependent on where the light is in relation to the object. The so so what the Bible is trying to say is that he does not change like a shifting shadow. He is the same. He was in the same place. He is in the same place, and he will be in the same place. His personality doesn't change. It's only our expect, uh, expectation that changes things in our life. So where you see God did for, for Job, what you see God did with Abraham, what you see God did with the, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, all throughout scriptures, he will do the same for you. So have that expectation and continue to read this. Verse 18, he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. God cares about you. You're his most prized possession. He cares about you. He loves you. He doesn't want to harm you. He's not trying to inflict you with 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 bad things. He wants the absolute best for you. And I know majority of people have no idea what it's like to to grow up or to have a loving father in their lives because of uh, how today's society is and how, and how the world is. That's just a statistical fact that many people have an absent father in the home. So they don't know, and and they relate their um, natural father to their heavenly father. But that's not the case at all. He is a loving father. He wants the best for you. He wants you to walk down the best path for your life. And he knows which way that is. That's why it tears him apart to see what sin is has has done to to his people to his children how sin completely robbed men and women of their identity how sin completely taken people off the course and off the path into a world of hurt and destruction and torment god's not mad at you he wants to help you he wants to bring you back to this path that was the whole reason for jesus to come and bridge the gap between him and mankind And this is why you hear Christians uh, say that Christianity is not um, a religion, but it's a relationship between God. And that's exactly what it is. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to reveal things to you. He wants to show you things about why and who you are. And if you give him this chance and this opportunity, it will radically change your life. You don't have to rely on just going to the gym and getting your endorphins level up. You don't have to rely on prescription medication. The world wants to make money out of you. They don't care about your problems. They don't care about you. They they, they see you as as walking dollar signs. Look at the pharmaceutical companies. They don't care about you getting better. They just want you to maintain or just try to uh, prolong your death. And that's how they make money off of you. You're a walking asset. 
Because if they actually can cure you, guess what? You don't need them anymore. And then they won't make any money. That's that unfortunate. That's how the world works. Looks how to make money or, or what they can gain from getting people into your life. But that's the complete opposite from God. He wants you to be fully whole. And he wants you to operate at a level where you're not just living life, but you're helping others. You're taking care of others. And that's exactly what Christ did. The Bible said that when Jesus was here, that he was moved with compassion. For he saw the people like sheep without a shepherd. So they were just going and wandering aimlessly, looking to whoever, going to whatever, following and listening to whoever. He, God cares about you. And then the faster you realize that, the faster your life's going to change around. That God's not trying to hurt you. He, he wants the best for your life. But the thing is, it's us that determine where we go. It's either we're going to walk the path that he has, or we're going to go our own path. And our path will never be the best. Our path will have a lot of hardships. Our path will have a lot of obstacles. Our path would most likely lead us into an early grave. But when you're on the path that God has for you, the Bible says he makes every crooked path straight. Our path is illuminated forward. We will know the outcome. We will have a confidence and a boldness to run through it. And that's how I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you running into this coming year. I'm seeing you accomplishing great things. I'm seeing you going far and above your family expectation. You're going to be the first one in your family to break out. The first one in your family to own a home, to, to have a car, to finish university or college, to become an entrepreneur. You're going to be the first one in your family to break out. You're going to new heights this year. You're going to absolutely new levels. I see God's hand on your life and your family. The rest of your family is going to recognize, hey, what do you want? What is this? Even the even if your family is Christians, you're going to be like, oh, you're taking this God stuff too far. But I can't deny the results. This is why the Bible says, judge a tree by its fruit. You're going to be fruitful this coming year. No more ups and downs. Only from, from now on, only ups and ups. From glory to glory, victory to victory, and strength. To, but you know, sometimes there's a valley that we need to go through. Where do you read that? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, you will be always on top and never beneath. You know what always means? It means always. Consistently. Forever. Always on top and never beneath. And that's how you're going to be. Before I close, I'm going to bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're taking them higher. You're pushing them forward. There is a fire on the inside of them. They're going to run with the vision and the plan that you've instilled into their spirit. Father, for those that are wondering, why am I here? What have I been created for? God, you're going to begin to speak to them and show them and reveal to them their purpose and the plan that you have for them. Father, I bless them. Let these next 12 months be the greatest 12 months they've ever had. 12 months of rest, 12 months of peace, 12 months of increase, 12 months of joy. Let this year be filled with laughter, no sorrow, in Jesus' name. But in order for you to walk into this kind of level, you need to be right with God. And if you've never done that, I want to pray with you and for you at this very moment. So say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. I give you my life. I recognize that I have sinned and that sin has separated me from you. Father, forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. And make me new. I believe in my heart that you died and on the third day you rose again. I confess in my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. I renounce to the world. I renounce to the devil. Heaven is my home. I receive this free gift of salvation and I am your child in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, I want you to head over to my website, epicgospel.ca uh, and go to the read tab and I have a ton of free stuff to help you grow your faith. And if you haven't done this already, subscribe because I want to show you and, and stir your faith up.
Let's get you going. You know, there's a lot of people we need to reach. There's a lot of people that need the message of the gospel. The world and society crushes and beats down people. But I know there's, a, there's an army filled with the Holy Spirit and fire that's going to lift off this oppression off of this generation. And I know God's going to use you mightily from now until he comes. All right, God bless and see you in the next video.